What's going on, YouTube fam? It's your boy, Dax. Y'all already know what we got going on today. And it's going to be fun. I'm going to let y'all know right now, before I get into Kenny Washington and the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, before I get into that, let me go ahead and let you all know 100% that I appreciate you for following, watching, liking, subscribing. Boom on the subscribe button. I appreciate it 100%. Also, uh, tomorrow I will be posting another video that will be Super Bowl overview is going to be short, not going to be a long video, but I will post a little bit of an overview video. That is where I will put my pick and my pick is going to be the, uh, oh, y'all thought I was about to do it, but I'm not doing it like that. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Y'all know what we got. So Kenny Washington, first NFL black player. Big ups to Kenny Washington. So y'all already know I got the notes. So let's go ahead and jump on into it, right? So college, he went to UCLA. He was born in Los Angeles, went to UCLA, played for the Hollywood Bears. Then he played for the uh, Los Angeles Rams, all right? And then this was all post-World War II, okay? So when he played for the Bears, it was 1940 to 1945. And then from 46 to 48 is when he played for the Rams. He was an All-American in 39 when he was at UCLA. UCLA retired his number 13. Um, and then he was placed into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1956, all right? He had a short career. It really wasn't that long. He had a lot of injuries. He had five knee injuries and five knee surgeries, all right? But even despite all of that, he was still a really good football player. Um, in his second season, he had a 92-yard touchdown run from scrimmage, and that till this day is still the longest run from scrimmage in Rams history, all right? Um, so he retired in 1948. Uh, 80,000 people attended this retirement game. And it was crazy because this is back in 1948 when it was still kind of weird. It had already happened and there were some more players that were on other teams that were black, but it was still kind of weird. But the fact that 80,000 people, which, you know, at this time when we're looking at it, we're like, yo, Dax, 80,000 people, that's that's a lot, but yeah, I know we're used to the Alabama having 101,000, you know, Oklahoma having a hundred something thousand and Ohio State having, you know, 111,000, whatever. 80,000 people is a lot of people, but 80,000 people come out to see a black man retire was astronomically huge. All right. So 80,000 people came out and the whole entire stadium gave him a standing ovation. Kenny Washington, first NFL black player. And it has just been continuous since then. So big ups to Kenny Washington for opening up the floodgates for the black community. Now. The Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I know all y'all out there, Dax, who do I bet on, man? What's going on? Who, 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 who do I go for? Listen, you make your bet based off of who you want to make your bet to. But I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? If, if you are a betting person, I'm not personally, but if you're a betting person, this is going to be one of the most fun bets ever. Now, I don't know who to put your bet on. I don't know about over and unders and all that stuff. All I can tell you is the facts as to who's going to be on the field, who ain't going to be on the field, who has the best chance to win and go from there. Kansas City, day injury report don't look like Tampa Bay's. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my video that I posted yesterday and watch. Sammy Watkins is questionable. That's the only person that they got on the injury report. They got some people, of course, that are out indefinitely. And that is a big, big thing because they do have a third string tackle that they're going to be playing with again. And this is another test to see. Vita Vea, uh, you got JPP, you got Dominican Sue, you got a 
a, a very strong defensive line that this guy and, and, and all of the Kansas City Chief offensive linemen are going to have to be going up against. So this is going to be the, the test right there. Kansas City O-line and then Tampa Bay D-line. That's going to be a, a, a must, must watch matchup right there. All right. So. Patrick Mahomes has thrown for 580 yards in the playoffs. Um, of course, he's the leading passer. Um, Dar Darnell Williams has ran for 130 yards. He's their leading rusher. Tyreek Hill, 282 yards. He's their leading receiver. 237 rushing yards in the playoffs total. There is a 4.8 per carry rate right now for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not saying more than 237, but more than 4.8 on the ground. All right. Kansas City is going to have to run the ball. One of the good things that Kansas City is good at is not only getting up on you and, and keeping a foot on the gas, but they run the ball well when they need to, to be able to continue this. So, so Kansas City is going to have to run the football in this game. I told you yesterday about Leonard Fournette. And, and, and what he's been doing in the playoffs. Tampa Bay is going to run the football. So Kansas City is going to have to come out, and they're going to have to establish this running game and get the running game going. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, I know they got some athletes. I know they got some ballers. I know they got some guys that's going to be able to make a difference. But I'm going to tell you right now, who it relies on, who it runs off of, who the energy comes off of is Th number 32, okay? Tyran Matthew is who all of this is going to come off of. He's had five, he's had um, five tackles. I mean, uh, five sacks and two, I mean, uh, excuse me. Let me go back, okay? He's had 13 tackles, solo tackles, and one interception in the playoffs so far, okay? He's been all over the field. He's been crazy, all right? And that is who the energy has came off of when it's come to this Kansas City defense. All right. So their total, they've had five sacks and two interceptions in the playoffs. All right. They've had a good number of sacks. So they're getting after the quarterback, which you're going to have to do in this game. We all know it. I'm not getting into that. All right. The interceptions and the fumbles and stuff is what we need to get kind of dive into because Kansas City is going to have to create turnovers and capitalize on the turnovers that you get from Tom Brady. Part of the reason why Tom Brady is in this game, if not most of the reason why Tom Brady is in this game, is because Tom Brady handed out three interceptions to the the uh, Green Bay Packers, and they didn't capitalize. Green Bay had three chances to not only get the lead, put it away, and continue, but they didn't capitalize. Kansas City has to capitalize on bad mistakes made by the Buccaneers, whether it's Tom Brady, whether it's any other player on that team. They have to capitalize on turnovers. And then, of course, like I told y'all before, the, the matchup I'm looking for is Eric Bieniemy and Todd Bowles. Because those are some of the two of the greatest minds when it comes to the offense and defensive side of the ball. And you know that Eric Bieniemy is going to trust Pat Mahomes, number one. And then also, he's going to have plays ready to go. And he's going to have all different types of options and motions and shifts and stuff ready for the Kansas City Chiefs to come out here with their hand in the basket, ready to go ahead and grab that trophy, all right? And then Todd Bowles is great at reacting, all right? And I think that this is going to be a fantastic matchup because he puts these players in very good positions, not only to win football games, but to shut people down, okay? And, and you saw that in the Green Bay game when they had multiple chances um, to drive the field or to do certain things, and there was just nowhere for the ball to go. Or they just shut it down completely. They were getting after Aaron Rodgers all game. And that's the same thing that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to have to do when it came uh, when it comes to uh, playing against Tampa Bay on Sunday. All right? Um, I was listening to Colin Cowherd. Um, he's one of the guys I like to listen to. Um, and he was doing a... 
comparison on Andy Reid and Bill Belichick. I'm not getting into Bill Belichick, but there's one thing that he said that kind of stuck with me that I wanted to put on here, and it's Andy Reid wins with everyone. Andy Reid wins with everyone. If you go back into some of these games and some of these, I mean, everybody's touched the ball. Everybody's had a chance to get, I mean, running backs have ran the ball and caught the ball. Wide receivers have ran the ball and caught the ball. You've got so many different ways that they can score. And that's what makes them so dangerous is the fact that not only do they have those options to be able to score that way, but they also have that ability and they actually make it happen by continuing to score like that. So when it comes down to this, it is one of the best games. And I know that all of you out there are ready to see a 30-30, 40-40 game um, this I don't think is going to be a defensive game. I do think it's going to be an offensive game. Um, but we have seen uh, some of the games that we thought were going to be offensive games turn into defensive games when the Patriots played the Rams and it was nine to three or three to nine or something like that. It was crazy. And everybody was like, this is the most boring Super Bowl. I thought it was amazing. It was a defensive battle. All right. Um, so. This could possibly be that offensive boom that everybody is looking for. And if it is, it's going to be a great game. As always, like, follow, subscribe, and I will be back on tomorrow and I will let you know my pick. I will let you know who I am rooting for or whatever the case may be. Um, to be honest, I really don't care. I want the Falcons to get the act together so we can be in this game. But y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Dax. Hit me up. Twitter, Instagram. It's going to be below. Holla. Peace.